Prepare for a rude awakening. Shalom. This is Michael Rood at the Ophel Gardens Archaeological Park in Jerusalem. This is the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the five books of Moses. Yahshua the Messiah said that these are the words of life. The Apostle Paul said that these are the scriptures that lead us to salvation. King David, who made his own handwritten copy, said these words are like the sweetness of the honeycomb. These are the very scriptures that the Bereans searched to prove whether or not Paul was teaching them the truth. The Torah is the foundation of the Hebrew scriptures, and the Feast of the Lord, detailed in this ancient scroll, tell us about the coming of the Messiah. Join us in the Lester Summerall Television Studios where this multimedia presentation on the prophecies in the Feast of the Lord was recorded before the Bible prophecy students assembled by the Prophecy Club. This is Bible Prophecy 101. Now, Episode 3 in the 26-part series on the Prophecies in the Feast of the Lord, the Torah, and the Road to Emmaus. Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said that, From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Now, when Paul was writing to Timothy, he was not referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. They didn't even exist at that time. What he was referring to was the Torah, the five books of Moses. Now, the Torah is described in the scripture as, as the fence around God's people. That's how the prophets describe it. It is the fence around God's people. It's like a wall around God's people. And as God's people are inside the commandments of God, they are under God's protection. They are within his, his walls and his fence of protection. But the prophets describe false prophets coming along and busting down the wall, making a breach in the wall in which now God's people are wandering outside of his commandments and they are getting hurt because of it. Then the prophets come in and they stand in the wall, in the breach, and they say, this is where the wall was. This is where it was. No one was supposed to leave God's commandments. In fact, you're all out there. Everyone get back inside. A prophet's job was not to foretell the future. A prophet's job was to point the way back, stand in the breach and say, point the way back, come back to God's Torah, come back to his instructions. Now, if you don't do it, then I'm going to foretell your future, and it's not a real pretty picture. Then, of course, the prophets foretold the future. But it was all dependent upon whether Israel heard and repented and came back to God's commandments or if they lived outside of his commandments. And so it was th these scriptures that the, the Torah is the wall around God's people. The prophets pointed the way back, and so the prophets are literally Torah in themselves. The word Torah, as it's translated in the English as law, it, it can be kind of a a cumbersome interpretation. Because the word law, as soon as I say, it's the law, that just warms everyone's heart, doesn't it? Immediately, you picture blue flashing lights, prison bars, uh, shackles on your wrist, you have the right to remain silent. Everything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. That's what comes to mind. But the Hebrew is Torah. And Torah means God's instructions. And in the New Testament, Paul says that the Torah of God is just, it's righteous, it's holy, and it's good. What isn't? Natural man. He has enmity against God's Torah. He doesn't even want to subject himself to the commandments of God. He wants to be completely in rebellion. But a person who has the enmity slain, the enmity against the Torah and commandments slain, then in love, he just wants to respond, just like the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, well, you put it that way, thank you. I'd, I'd love to, thank you. And so it is that the, the, the Torah is like honeycomb. It is sweet to the taste. 
It's holy, it's righteous, and it's good. And it is this, that Paul is speaking to Timothy from a child. You've known these holy scriptures. You've known the Torah from a youth, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. This is what he is speaking of. He goes on to say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. What scripture is he speaking about here? The Torah. And of course, the prophets pointing the way back to the Torah. He's not talking about the New Testament scriptures. He's speaking that the Torah is profitable for doctrine. And here you have one of the main differences between a Hebrew mindset and a Greek mindset. The word doctrine is not theology. It's not what you sit in a pew and think. Doctrine is what you do. Just as it says in James, show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. It can just be your theology, what you're thinking, but what you actually do shows what you really believe. It says the devil believes in God. What's the big deal there? <laughs> He's not obedient. He doesn't keep his commandments, doesn't subject himself to, to God, but it is that doctrine is what we do. We can disagree with each other in our theology on, on many things, but what we do, we still do his word and do his commandments. And it is the Torah that's profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. And it's given by inspiration of God. Now, I'm not saying that the New Testament scriptures aren't given by inspiration of God. Make no mistake, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that what he is talking about here is the Torah and the prophets. That's all that existed. That's what Timothy was raised with all of his life. Shaul reasoned with them in the synagogues out of the scripture, it says in the Acts of the Jewish Apostles 17.2. Now, that does look a little bit strange on the screen there, the Acts of the Jewish Apostles 17.2, because you notice I added the word Jewish in the title of the book, The Acts of the Apostles. But did I do it accurately? Yes, because all the apostles were Jewish. So I just want to help you, you know, make the shift a couple of thousand years back to where, just as Paul said, to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. What those first century Jewish believers walked in with the power of God, we have not seen happen in our day and time. And that is why he said that all those who are in Asia have forsaken me, and to earnestly contend for that faith once delivered to the saints. Because what was delivered to us, what we have inherited from our forefathers, is not clean. There's a lot of paganism mixed in with it, and we have to very earnestly contend if we are going to go back to the purity of the love of God and obedience to God. So Shaul reasoned with them out of the scriptures. What scriptures did he use to reason with them in the synagogue and to teach that Yahshua was Messiah? Did he use the book of Romans? Can you imagine it? And he says, and the reason it is true is because I wrote it right here in this book to the Romans. That would go over real big, wouldn't it? No, he had to use the Torah because the Torah is, are the scriptures which are able to make one wise unto salvation. They are the, the scriptures that show us what the Messiah must accomplish, and it is the Torah that proves that Yahshua is Messiah. Apollos convinced the Jews by the scriptures that Jesus was Messiah. What scriptures did Apollos use? The Torah, the prophets. That's all that existed at that time. As it says, the Bereans searched the scriptures daily, whether those things that Shaul taught, whether they were true or not. Now, many times I'll use uh, Paul's uh, Hebrew name, Shaul. There's nothing wrong with the name Shaul. It's just that there is no uh, sheen in the Greek language. And so there's no way to do a direct translation over into uh, the Greek language, like my name. My name is Michael in Hebrew. It's Michael in English. It's Miguel in, uh, in Spanish. It's Mikel in Russian and Michelle in French. It sounds a little bit different depending on the culture, but it's the same name, Michael. And so Shaul, when he became a follower of the Jewish Messiah, he wasn't given a Greek name. Whenever someone was given a new name, it was another good Hebrew name. 
a good Jewish name. And so uh, sometimes I'll say Shaul, sometimes I'll say Paul, just so that you know that we're talking about the same person, okay? So Shaul, it says that uh, the Bereans searched the scriptures daily, whether those things that Shaul taught, whether they were so or not. What scriptures did the Bereans search to prove what he was saying was true? The Torah, the Torah and the prophets. That's all that existed. And if the, you are going to prove what Paul speaks, whether it's true or not, you've got to take it right back to the Torah and be able to show it right out of the Torah. See, what has happened is that Paul's writings and his teachings have been taken completely out of context of God's word and twisted around and have not been taken back to the Torah to show exactly where he's quoting it from so that we understand him. And so his words have been wrestled into 4,000 different denominations in the West, and the people don't even understand that he's a, a, a Hebrew rabbi, and he's interpreting the Torah and teaching the Torah. Our beloved brother Paul, this is what Peter says. This is such a beautiful statement that he makes. Our beloved brother Paul hath written unto you some things hard to be understood. Can anyone relate with Peter on this one? That Paul writes some things hard to be understood? Yes, we're, we're like Peter. We're, we're more like fishermen. Shaul was a brilliant scholar. And uh, it says that, that he has written some things that are hard to be understood. And they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle these things that he's written as they do also the other scriptures and they wrestle them to their own destruction. What are they unlearned and unstable in? They're unlearned in the Torah. They can't take Shaul's writings right back to the Torah and make it all fit and make it make sense. Instead, they take it and they wrestle it around their own misunderstandings, wrestling it into 4,000 different denominations that every week hammer on each other and tell each other that they're going to hell. Just nonsense, nonsense because they completely take it out of the context of God's word and they wrestle it around their own 20th century Gentile misunderstandings. And he went on to say, beware, you beware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. And the word wicked, the reason why it's the word wicked because it means twisted. Just as a candle wick is twisted, that's what it comes from. And when you twist the scripture around your own misunderstanding, that's what it means about being led away by the error of the wicked. Now, what did the Messiah himself say about the error of the wicked? He says, you do err not knowing the Torah. That's what he's referring to. You err not knowing the Torah. So tonight, we are going to go to the Torah. We're going to go right back to the beginning, and we're going to put the scriptures in the New Testament in the context of the Torah so that we can understand what Paul writes and we can understand the Feast of the Lord. <laughs> 